welcome back to the channel. We hope that you'll come along with us as we venture out on our first exploration of southeastern Arizona. We had several great finds on this outing and this area will definitely be on our list to revisit. We start by heading east on I-10 out of Phoenix. Only about 25 miles before we hit the New Mexico border, we take exit 362 heading towards Bowie, Arizona. We had already topped off our tanks in Wilcox, but it looks like Bowie is the last chance for fresh jerky and local pecans before we depart from civilization. From Bowie, we headed south and then southwest on Happy Camp Canyon Road. The roads are well-maintained dirt roads which were easily passable in an SUV pulling a trailer. I guess I'm not quite wearing the smile of a happy camper yet, but you'll have to trust me in that I was smiling on the inside. We were really happy that the exact campsite we were hoping for was open when we arrived. This would be our first trip where we weren't camping solo, and we were soon joined by Diane and Lola. There was a brief discussion of strategy when they arrived, dropped the trailer to claim our campsite, and got set up for lunch. There are quite a few dispersed campsites at Indian Bread Rocks, most of which have beautiful views of the surrounding rock. Some of the campsites further up the road are a little more challenging to get to because the road gets more difficult the further you go. We chose a campsite fairly close to the entrance to give us easier access to the facilities. The nicely shaded picnic area was only about a 300 foot walk from our campsite, but we chose to drive over since we would be heading out to a hike right after lunch. Indian Bread Rocks has a picnic area situated next to some great boulders for scrambling and a vault toilet which was in better shape than most. While scoping out the amenities I was trying to get some footage of Lola but she was a little camera shy for some reason. I'm the only one that has food left. Yes. Oh, I should see her. She's like, what are you? What? Uh-huh. I shouldn't have to think about that camera. You're going to get me. Good scrambler. And then she gets up here and she's got a great view. I think she likes ledges too, like me. Yeah. <laughs> Is she a ledge dog? I think so. You're going to scramble. Yeah. You're going to scramble down so we can move well, along. You want to witness it? Yeah. After a relaxing lunch, it was just a short drive to the Fort Bowie National Historic Site Trailhead. This three to four mile round trip hike passes several noteworthy items, such as Apache Spring, on the trek to the site of the fort. Fort Bowie was a 19th century outpost of the United States Army located near the present day town of Wilcox, Arizona. The fort was established by the California Volunteers in 1862 after a series of engagements with the Chiricahua Apaches. And the fort was named in honor of Colonel George Washington Bowie, commander of the 5th Regiment California Volunteer Infantry who first established the fort. The first item of interest encountered on the trail is an old miner's cabin. This ruin was the home of Jesse Millsap, a local prospector and well digger. For years, this structure had been unidentified until a park visitor said that as a boy, he rode with his dad 
in a Model T Ford to visit his uncle at this cabin. The first Fort Bowie resembled a temporary camp rather than a permanent army post. In 1868, a second, more substantial Fort Bowie was built, which included adobe barracks, houses, corrals, a trading post, and a hospital. Following the trail next led us to the Post Cemetery. The cemetery actually predated the establishment of the fort and was unfenced until 1878 when a four-foot adobe wall was erected to protect the graves from desecration by the livestock. In 1885, a picket fence replaced the adobe wall and by 1887, headstones replaced the wooden headboards. Some simply read, unknown, killed by Apaches. Of the most decorated was Medal of Honor recipient O.O. O. Spence. Five months after the fort's closure, the remains of 72 soldiers, dependents, and unknowns were removed for reinternment at the San Francisco National Cemetery. 23 civilian graves remain. Around the fence and up the trail a little farther reveals one of the reasons for the location of this fort, Apache Spring. Water is precious in the Arizona desert, and this vital source was one of the catalysts which caused conflict between the Chiricahua Apaches led by Cochise and the growing procession of uninvited settlers. The remains of the fort, which is the final point of interest, lies just up the hill from the spring. Closest to the trail are the powder magazine and the gun shed. It seems to make sense that these places would be somewhat distant from the other buildings in case of accident. There's a lot more to see than we expected, and we were surprised by the size of this settlement. I even discovered that there was a steam-powered ice maker on site, which is quite impressive for the 1800s. Powered in part by the steam engine, the ice machine produced ice by virtue of a chemical reaction between anhydrous ammonia and salt water. Near the visitor center rests a nicely restored cannon, and from here the majority of the fort is visible. We really could have spent more time here, but had to leave to get back to camp. Sunlight would soon be fading and we still had work to get our camp set up for the night. So, we took one last look around at some of the sites, did a little shuttling to get everyone back to their vehicles, and made the short, easy drive back to camp.
Through the magic of motion pictures, it only took me about 30 seconds to get the tent set up this time. Everyone was scrambling around and working together to make sure we had everything organized before it got too dark. Carrie got to work on the fire, which is probably her favorite thing about camping. And I took a few photos as the sky started to display beautiful sunset colors. With camp set up and daylight fading, it was time to get to work on dinner. with our start. Dinner after dark. I'm getting there though. We got it. What you making tonight, baby? Um, we have corn, mac and cheese, and hamburger sliders. Delicious. We got burgers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's keep we can keep these in the uh, cooler. Hi, baby. You, want, you like hamburgers? Oh, of course you do. Last hint of sunlight on the horizon. night of camping. Oh, and Prosecco. Don't forget we have that too. And our camp mascot seemed pretty interested in the cooking burgers, which were beginning to smell pretty great. All right, we're checking back in with the chef. She's grilling up the buns and everything. <laughs> Corn's really boiling. Oh yeah, we got a fire going. Mm-hmm. We're gonna toast our buns. Some nice toasty buns with the corn. We've mixed the mac mac and cheese. The corn and sliders. What do you think? She wants a slider. She'll take mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. following the camera. What? I guess she doesn't think it's so bad anymore. After enjoying a delicious dinner, we admired the stars for a while before turning in for a night of our tent being rattled by the strong winds, which made sleeping pretty tough. By morning, the winds had calmed some, which gave me a chance to get the drone back in the air. We got the fire going again to try to coax Carrie from the tent. This was my first time flying again after my costly encounter with a tree, so I was being extra cautious. The morning was true perfection. The winds had calmed, the temperature was perfect, and the rocks were glowing with the rising sun. Other than the wind noise, this proved to be a great overnight stop. The campground was quiet and clean, and although it was well used, we never felt crowded. Yeah, right over there. 
Oh no. What is it? <laughs> Go the other way. Making for us this morning, baby. We had cheesy eggs, <clears throat> pancakes with blueberries, and bacon. Yummy. Um, no need to suffer just because we're camping. After much windy frustration. After breakfast, we said our teary goodbyes before parting ways. Diane and Lola were making the long drive back to Texas, and Carrie and I are stopping at Chiricahua National Monument before heading home. The quickest way to Chiricahua from our camp was the same direction as Fort Bowie. Apache Pass Road continues to be a well-maintained road passable by about any type of vehicle and the scenery continues as it winds through the mountains before turning due south and flattening out. A few more miles of dirt and it connects with the paved Arizona 186 which continues south toward the park. After passing through the unattended park entrance, the road quickly becomes very scenic as it climbs back into the mountains. There are numerous hikes to choose from in Chiricahua, but today we would be doing the Echo Canyon Loop since our time was limited. Echo Canyon is about a four mile hike down into the canyon which boasts views of unique rock formations. where that tree came from we look up here that rock hanging on by a thread Come on down so we can keep going. We chose to do the loop counterclockwise, which ended up making the first half of the hike the most spectacular. And we might have preferred to just do that section as an outback instead of completing the loop. Enormous balanced boulders and hoodoos were around every corner and as far as the eye could see. What? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh yeah, you gotta come up here. All right.
The way that the wind and water worked to carve these mountains was fascinating. Look at that mangled old tree. How awesome is that? This section was probably the highlight of the backside of the trail. Walking along this shelf provided a view of thousands of these unique rock formations lining the canyon walls. I imagine that it would light up spectacularly at the sunset golden hour. This was really a pretty easy hike, which should be accessible to most. It was a little over two hours before we were back at the car and headed home. We hope you enjoyed joining us while we explored southeastern Arizona. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.